Uh, I want to start out with something. I'm sure you may have seen this, and uh, I mean, obviously I've seen it, you've seen it, you've all heard about it, everybody's talked about it a little bit. So, let me see if I get this straight. Trump, during his presidency, had to fight off a story about Russia collusion, literally for four years. And the nexus or the crux of that story was the dossier, which was proved to be bogus and was paid for by Hillary Clinton. So for four years we heard about collusion. And every time you have a conversation with somebody who is a progressive by nature or a liberal or left of center or a Democrat, to this day, they bring up Russia with Trump. To this day. Even in articles written this week, last week, all somehow mention this collusion between Trump and Russia. And nobody seems to want to, or nobody from the media, which is basically all left-leaning, nobody wants to admit they're wrong. Nobody wants to say, well, that was a mistake. So that story simmers and throws, it just kind of sits out there, is probably a better way to put it. It sits out there that it's easy for the left to reference from time to time, even though it means nothing. There's no weight behind it. So for four years, actually longer than that, we had to hear that Trump was Putin's puppet. Even, even like to this day, if I have a conversation with someone who claims to be intelligent, like the progressives that I, that I, you know, every once in a while I'll reference a few folks that I still have conversations with. Well, not, ne- not nearly as many because now, even though as, sometimes I enjoy the conversations because they're intellectuals and you can pick pieces out, it's just all packed with garbage and crap, right, that they picked up. Uh, from different publications that they've ho- they bought hook, line, and sinker because, oh, God, the New York Times couldn't lie. Oh, God, no way. They're always right. So for four years, we, we fought that. All right, so now the New York Times admits that the Biden laptop, which was falsely called Russia disinformation, is in fact authentic. So all of the emails... All the garbage in that laptop, the pictures, the just the ugliness that is Hunter Biden, it's all true. It's all true. So when the New York Post, one of the oldest, if not the oldest paper in the country, one of the oldest papers in the country, wanted to go with that story, Twitter continued to take it down and then censored them. You remember that before the election? Oh, well, this was false information, disinformation, blah, blah, blah. All true. All true. And the question is, would you have voted differently had you known that Joe Biden and his son were in bed with Russia? I don't know, I don't know because your hatred for Trump was so deep. I don't know if that would have changed your mind. But here we are on this 21st day of March. First official show of spring. And still, this is a story that's buried by the left-leaning media. Why? Why are you so protective of this man who spent 47 years plus in politics, who clearly has a crack addict, dope fiend, potential pedophile as a son, And this is the guy that you want to protect? This is the guy you're circling the wagons around? A guy, while thousands of people are dying, being slaughtered in Ukraine, he's out for a bike ride. Okay? Because he has to go home every weekend because he's too goddamn old. Sorry. He is. He can't handle it. So he goes home. Can you imagine what the conversation was between Biden and... And she of China, can you imagine what that, supposedly they had a conversation for two hours. About what? His diapers? His false teeth? What? He's incompetent and crooked. Holy God. 
He sit on this for decades, some people apparently. Sitting on it, meaning the media sitting on it for decades. We are in trouble. We are on the brink of World War III with a corrupt... It's the word I'm looking for that would best fit. We've used so many. Incompetent, yes, we know that. Corrupt, incompetent leader in the White House. I mean, treasonous. Everything this guy does is contrary to what should be done. Everything. 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 So, as you know, on October 14th, less than, in 2020, less than three weeks before the Americans were set to vote, again, the New York Post had this story. They, went, they began re- re- publishing a re- series of reports, the business dealings of the Democrat frontrunner Joe Biden and his son, Hunter, in countries in which Biden, as vice president, wielded considerable influence, including Ukraine and China. And would again, if elected, the backlash against the reporting was immediate and intense, leading to suppression of the story. This is the United States of America. And stories are being suppressed to make sure one candidate has a better chance to get elected than the other. That's, I can't think of anything worse than that. From a media perspective. I mean, shame on every single one of you who are in the media who are doing that. I'm not trying to put myself in some position of honor or glory. If something comes across my desk and it's big, or, or if small, whatever, if it's, if it's a story, I read it. I talk about it. It doesn't matter who is damaged by it because it's a story. Like, I'm not betting on the winner. Don't, I don't, and I still don't understand why the media does that. To this day, don't you want what's best for the United States of America in the end? When you got into media, when you were a, a bright and bushy-eyed 20-year-old, and were running copies in some dark room somewhere, and you wanted to write and you wrote about everything, is, it, is this what you wanted? To essentially carry the water for a party? To be a suck up to Biden and his cronies? It's an embarrassment. You're an embarrassment. Somebody at the New York Times, a right, you're trying to tell me that. See, I don't believe that there's payoffs down the line. I, don't, I just I have a hard time believing that. So th- these folks have made a ch- conscious choice that they thought that this person would be better suited as president than the last person. And in doing so, they're willing to throw away a story that is as big as it gets about corruption, uh, about the ugliness of this family, about the big guy. And America sits here, nothing. We talk about nothing. doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. You guys don't care. And Biden goes for a bike ride on Sunday. While Russia decides to use hypersonic missiles. I mean... <laughs> Listen, I'm getting older every second of every day, right? And, and so, you know, I don't have any kids. I have nephews that, again, I certainly would die for. And all, all that goes along. Family members, too. It's, it's, it, but... You know, I don't have a kid. You're leaving your kids a world that it, it certainly won't be. The, it could be, it very possibly could not even be close to the same thing that you grew up with. And if, I guess if you're okay with that, okay. Keep, keep voting, keep acting, keep being the same as you are. Keep blaming the idea of, of Trump as, you know, the big boogeyman in the room. It's, it, it's actually it's so insulting. It's insulting to your intelligence. <clears throat> that you're you don't have any critical thinking going on none blind hatred for one man okay and and over a, what a story that's not even real what is the real reason because he's a narcissist and he was nasty with tweets and he loved himself more than anybody else in the world that's why you hated him 
Wow. Okay. I can understand why you would hate somebody personally for that. I get it. But it did seem like the guy put the country first, didn't it? All right. Since it's the first day of spring and I'm all wound up. <laughs>